Hey friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm so excited you're here with me today. I'm gonna paint this adorable little bunny. I'll link this reference photo in the video's description. It's on Pixabay. I'm gonna paint it on a little wood cradled, where is it? Oh, this is from US Art Supply. It's a six by six inch cradled wood panel. I think I said that backwards. I've got two coats of clear gesso on it. Okay. Let's have some fun. Okay, let's set the table. I uh, already told you this was a wood panel from US Art Supply. Uh, two coats of clear gesso. You could mix paint in with that gesso. Um, you know, you could use white gesso, black gesso, whatever you want. I think I like saying the word gesso. Here, here's what, it, what I use. That's just what it looks like. You guys use whatever you like. Um, I pretty much use all Liquitex products. Let's see. I debated about how did I know what colors to use. I was going to do a more muted painting, but then I decided I really like that pop of pink with the green. So the pink and the light green, yellow green is, they might be compliments, but they're really, they're like cousins of compliments if they're not exactly compliments, compliments. <laughs> Red and green are compliments. Okay. I'm saying lots of words over and over again, or the same word. I use a Oh, I think that's a three quarter inch filbert from uh, Royal and Langnickel is their mental line. I got it at Michael's and then I end up putting out what I call like my primaries. The blue changes a little bit, but I have quinacridone magenta. I don't know if you guys want to see the tubes. I'll just show you this one and you can um, see how transparent it colors by how much that box is filled in. So quinacridone magenta. <clears throat> Excuse me, phthalo blue green shade, cad yellow medium hue, titanium white, and Mars black. And so I mixed a yellow green, a blue green with some black, um, basically a raw sienna color. Uh, a lot of yellow, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of black, and I just kind of mix it till I get something close to that. It's pretty close. So I think that's going to be mostly our rabbit color. And then I'm just thinking, you know, some dark grasses down here that the rabbit's going to sit in. Um, those are vertical strokes. And I went horizontal with some yellower greens and then they just get a little bit lighter. And then I kind of hinted at the pinks and browns and what's nice here, this is something I should say. So since red and green are compliments, I mixed the, sorry, my throat is dry. I mixed the magenta and the greens and some white and just kind of kept playing with it. And I got a pretty, pretty brown. Um, if they're, you should be able to get a gray too, if they're compliments, or at least close to a gray, but it also depends on the paint brand and the pigments they used. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a while. Probably even come back after dinner. I printed out my rabbit photo to scale. I'll cut it out. I did dot a little bit in Photoshop so I could see the edges better, some of the features better. So I'll cut it out, scribble on the back with some chalk pastel. Um, I use Hippie Crafter. I use Prism Hippie Crafter and Prismacolor are harder. There's a new pastel. Can you see that? Oh, here, let's grab a different one. That's probably easier to read. There, this one's much easier to read. So I have Hippie Crafter linked in this video's description. I don't know if I have these linked. They're harder pastel. I also have softer ones. Um, and I can't think of the brand right now. I think they're Blick Art Materials. Oh, and hopefully I didn't, that didn't get in the paint. Oh, it didn't. Okay, guys, I think that gets us up to speed and I'll be back after a bit.
Hey, let's stop a second and chat. I'm using a flat brush from Royal and Lane Nickel. It's their Zen line. It's a half inch. Get my hands up here so it focuses. I'm also using a small round from US Art Supply. I think it's really inexpensive. It came in a pack of uh, several little brushes. I think this one, I, I don't mind. I like it. Th I think these are a little thin. Just a little too thin. I don't mind a thin brush. But you guys, you guys can figure out what you like. Sorry, um, dry throat today. So all I'm doing is painting the shapes. I traced on my, I used the photo. I, I printed it out a little bit smaller. Scribbled on it on the back with chalk pastel and then used a ballpoint pen to trace it on. I put a little pink in the ears just to help remind me that I want to put some pink in the rabbit. And I'm basically just uh, following the shadows in the reference photo. The sun is probably coming from back right hand side. So I just put my sun up here. <laughs> Happy sun. I think that's about it. Mix, just mixing colors for my primaries. I mixed a little purple thinking I might put some purple in the eyes. But it's just, it doesn't look like much yet. I did outline, the rabbit has quite a few outlines on it. Here, I'll show you the reference photo. So I outlined quite a few things and I'll end up going over with brush strokes. Brush stroke direction matters, especially with fur, but it can matter in a lot of things, even in an apple or a pear. But it's just starting to take shape. I'm always, like I'm nervous about that because it's such a strong color right now. But I also was telling myself it's a pet portrait, basically, and the face will command a lot of attention. So I think we'll be okay. And you just kind of have to trust the process. Did I just say that? Paint some layers. Like I've got warmer here, cooler here, shad you know, darker shadow there. Oh, here, I was going to show you the reference photo. Oh, getting a little glare from my light. Okay, guys, my phone's ringing. I'll be back in a bit. Hey friends, this is the next day. A couple of things I wanted to say is, I mean, this painting could be done if you like it. It's for me, I want it, I'm just erasing some of the chalk pastel that I just happened to see after I turned the, my phone on to video. Um, it's flat to me. So I want, I want the eyes to be much darker um, probably bring up some values, actually maybe change the mouth a little bit, but it's, it's great start. I've got all, I've got the shape of the rabbit there. It's what I mean when I say paint layers. I sneak up on the values too. So even though I painted an almost, well, that's pretty darn white right there, right here. Um, one coat of white or almost white darkens on the darker background. And I even have a little green around the eyes, which I don't mind because there's some of the background showing through. I've got a little green on the mouth. Probably should leave it, leave some of it. But I, it'll help it look more real if I pull some 
Well, I need, we need to put whiskers on, which will be fun, but like pull some fur over the edges, that sort of thing. Okay, I just want to pop in and say that. I'm going to start with darkening the eyes, and then I'll be back. guys so the audio on this section was terrible <laughs> um so i'm gonna do a little voice memo voiceover thing so what i'm saying is i thought i'd paint the eye in real time and i'm just touching up the eye that's pretty probably pretty much finished and then holding it up to the camera so you can see a little bit better so I'll try to narrate what I was thinking. So here I'm going for a light blue. That can be a nice low light in an eye. It just suggests the sky, the bunnies outdoors. I have no idea what I'm saying here. Yeah, so it's my, even might be a little bit too dark of a blue. I'm watching myself paint. So when I pause, I'm looking at the reference photo. And I already mentioned this, but the refer the link to the reference photo is in this video's description. I have lots of links. People ask me about brushes and the wood panels. No pressure, just in case you're curious. I'm going to put a little, pur oh, I'm probably saying here, I mixed a purple and I didn't really use it much. There is some purple under the chin. Um, I mixed it for the eyes, but it probably doesn't, I don't think it shows. It just ends up looking black with the colors underneath it. But it doesn't hurt to try to mix it up. So you can see sometimes I roll my brush to get a point. I'll try to show that, point that out to you again. <clears throat> so I just put down little bits of paint. You'll see me like stroke it several times because I, it's a bit really light touch. And if the line gets too big, you can let it dry and come back and skinny it up with a light color around it. I think too, I'm also saying he looks a little angry. So I'm pretty sure I round out the eye a little bit more as, I, as we go along here. And I think that makes it look angrier. No, maybe not. So after I get basically the first layer of color on, things go slower because I pay more attention to details. Especially the eyes. Oh, I think I zoomed in on the eye on my iPad. And then I was saying, yay, I can turn this because it won't make you dizzy. In the time lapse, I try not to turn it or take it away too much because it I don't want to make you guys dizzy. And it's easier to push against the edge. You know, put some paint down and kind of push it out a little bit. You can probably can't tell, even though I've got it held up to my phone camera. And for me, it's easier to pull than it is to push, too. 
if that makes sense. So you kind of put the paint down inside the eye and then push it up against the edge you want. But if it's a line, it's easier for me to pull it. Oh, here I'm going uh, a little bit there more circular to help define the eye shape. Oh, and here I'm trying to make it look less angry. <laughs> Man, not a lot of changes when you watch this in real time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So mix in a light gray. There, I just rolled it so you can get a point on it. The brush, if um, I don't know if I mentioned it, it's from U.S. Art Supply. I, I mean, I, they're really inexpensive, so it's hard not to like that. Um, but they're not my favorite. I like Royal and Langnickel or Princeton a little bit better. But really, you know, every artist likes different brushes. I think they're really well made for the price. Much better than some uh, brushes I got on Amazon. I don't know what I did there. Oh, I bet you I grabbed a little water. So I'm putting in a couple of the, or I was gonna put in one of the, it's not a whisker, but it's like a hair and I didn't like it. So I just come back with some of the cream color and basically paint it out. It dried so fast. I've got so many, well, there I made a little gray. Um, piece of fur but it doesn't really matter it's not a pet portrait no one's gonna be looking at the photo reference so I just went with it sort of a happy accident kind of thing I was gonna paint it out but it was still wet I might have been able to wash it out all right so now I'm going for a little lighter purple thalo blue green shade and quinacridone magenta makes a pretty purple You could argue all these little things I'm doing don't make much difference. Um, but I'm like, it doesn't hurt to try it. May not show, but it doesn't hurt to try it. Yeah, so here I'm going around the shape of the the eye, so the eye is like a ball, if, it, if you could see the whole thing. Part of it's in the head. So I'm seeing if going in the round direction will help it look look a little bit better. I don't, on video, as I'm editing it, ed, 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 <laughs> it uh, doesn't seem to make much difference. But what I see in person is a lot more detail and roughness. The video smooths it out than what you guys see. So let me know in the comments if it helps to see me paint this eye in real time. So now I'm putting just a little bit lighter highlight, but not as big as the blue highlight I put on there. It's a lighter blue and I'm putting it in, a, in slightly smaller areas over the first blue layer. And it must not have been quite light enough in value. So I'm making an even lighter blue. Maybe I'm going for the highlight now. Oh, I'm going for the highlight. I end up reinforcing a little bit after a bit and putting straight up white on there. I think that left ear is pretty close to done. The values look good at this point. Oh, here, this is gonna help. So I'm gonna put, there's kind of a white rim around the eye. And I'm trying to round it out a little bit. 
Yeah, I don't know if that really even shows. I'm bummed the audio didn't work. I wonder if I just didn't have my microphone plugged in all the way. Because I think it works at the end here. Yeah, it's starting to look good. Oh, I'm seeing if things are fairly lined up. Really could bring that eye down just a little bit more on the right. I, I think I'm saying there that I brought the eye on the left down just a little bit too much. Sometimes when you paint things, they grow because you cover your, I trace this, so you cover the tracing line. But I'm not too worried about it. I didn't change it. Putting this straight up white, and I'm talking about that there's a triangle shape at the top of the eye. And then I got too much paint, so I wiped it off on my paper towel. I'm just going to Pull that paint around and kind of blend it in. There we go. And then I, my brush runs out of paint, so then I just kind of scumble or dry brush. Right there. Neat. So this painting took me for sure two afternoons. I'm not a fast painter and that's okay. You guys don't need to be fast either. I just, I put down paint, I adjust values, add some details, you know, adjust if I need to. Play with the color. It's so one thing I like about semi-transparent paint is you can glaze color over it. So since I brought up the value of the right eye that I was just working on, I brought up the ring a little bit on the, the eye on our left side, the one I'm working on now. Because when you make a change in one place, it affects the rest of the painting. And I kind of lost the little white patch of fur on top of its head. I'm calling this Sunny Bunny, because it's like a sunny spring day. adding some highlights and seeing what I think. Teeny little brush. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to head into the time lapse here. Okay, guys, I'm calling it done. I've mentioned it a couple times. That makes me nervous. I did put a little pink down in here, a little pink in the nose. Uh, straight up quinacridone there. Uh, just because it works in a photo doesn't mean it's going to work in a painting. But it's a pretty simple photo crop. Uh, as a reminder, I linked that photo in this video's description. Here, we'll take a little tour. I just put in simple grass. It's pretty soft. I've been trying to paint looser, so I'm not sure if I like that or not. Here. Give you a look. Sometimes my phone shifts the color a little bit when I bring it up closer as opposed to f 
further away. I can't tell how accurate it is. Oh yeah, I think it's intensifying and darkening some of the color. Paint it a little bit over onto the sides. Not much. There was a little bit of rabbit and I ended up covering it with grass. And then the bottom's just kind of messy. Not much on the top. Okay, so screenshots, if I can get it straight. Let me know if you give this one a try. Rabbits are sweet. Animals are sweet. I really enjoy painting animals. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. It's just so much fun. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.